before we get about uh, start talking about the music that you've been making lately, I'd like to go back to the beginning. And you met at the university, I believe. Yeah. Do you remember your first impression of him? Our first what? First impression of him. First impression of of, of him. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. We uh, had to get one. We met for the first time. We were playing a cocktail party for a residence. Actually, it wasn't it wasn't through the band. It was something else entirely. The two of us. At my res, right? Yeah. It was in it was in a, it was in a residence of, of one of the university buildings. They had this fancy little wine and cheese party. Did we even get paid? We got paid in wine. I doubt it. Everybody was dressed up in like suits and ties, and we were playing 20s music. Yeah. It was like a swing party, but we got we got paid in food and wine, and so I think we got off on the right foot because of the wine. You know, that was the first time that we played. Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah, yeah. You 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 brought it to those I guys. Brought a charge. That's you brought hilarious. a charge to those guys. So oh, wow. no, you just told us the chords. Oh, yeah. That's fun. <laughs> but yeah, what was that like? Because uh, did you play together that? Evening? Yeah, but we weren't we weren't singing or at any or rapping or doing anything at that time. I was playing sax and he was playing okay. keys. It was entirely like we were playing background jazz. It was and, really and funny. What connected you together to, to kind of continue making music? Was it immediately after, or did it take a while? Well, then the band. What were we doing right? Now? So I had kind of just started playing with the rest of the guys, and I wasn't even one of the the original. And by original, we're talking like a month or two difference here. Right, right, right. Uh, and I had just sort of started playing with them, and then we met Evan through school, and then randomly we played a gig in a bar, and he came on stage and took a melodica solo. <laughs> So like a complete, no, you know, like player. melodic, yeah. So he took a melodic, which is the worst instrument on earth. <laughs> he doesn't like it. Yeah. Uh, so he just took a melodica solo, and we're like, all right, come play keys. And then it was like, you know, this, this, the band was instrumental for years. Right. And for then, years. <laughs> like literally, like I think for, for the first two like years, year. for the first two years, I would sing one song a set, and Evan would rap a song a set. What was that? Like, do we have any more than like two songs with vocals? Oh, we did like the Marvin Gaye cover. And then, SMO? Yeah, yeah, old school. When, when did the feeling start to, to arrive that, that maybe you should have more, more vocals or more? Yeah. Because you say two years, it's quite mm -hmm. long. So. Yeah, for a good year or two, it was just, I mean, it, it, there was never really like a moment where we decided, it just kind of happened. Okay. We, got, we both got more comfortable mm. with the craft of what we were doing. The comfortability yeah. factor is the main thing. Just knowing like that we actually could do it and that people wouldn't like throw things at us on stage. Yeah, because we sucked. We were <laughs> yeah. bad. If there's some old things on the internet, if you float around, you can find them. <laughs> what, what was your worst gig? Our worst gig? Oh god. We, we have a lot of worst gigs. Yeah, we, 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 took, we took everything. Okay. We would take a gig for a hundred bucks for nine people. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. We take a, a gig for zero bucks yeah. for nine people. And some oh. wine. <laughs> yeah. But well, the, at least you know your heart's in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so, and then it's like you say, it is a big band. So, so w w when it comes to the creative aspect, is it difficult to get everybody on the same page? S sometimes, but overall, I'd say no, because we, we there's so many ideas flowing around that it's much easier to filter ideas than to try to like create something for nothing. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a wealth of ideas and we've really figured out how to how to communicate and how to figure out what's best. Mm -hmm. Working with a producer has helped okay. to have someone, just because there's so many avenues we can take. Right. And it's not necessarily if one is right or wrong, it's just picking one and right. really sticking with it. And that's what having a producer has helped with. Be like, okay, these are all the ideas, let's just go this way. And then, am I right in saying this is new uh, Pope? Yeah. So, so when he came in, and I read a little bit about this, but what, what, what did he focus on, and, and especially what did he, did he show you kind of to make those kind of decisions? For me, it was uh, not trying to just make music that was like going to impress our peers, mm -hmm. not just make music for SoundCloud. It was like the, the bigger picture kind of thing. Right. And that's like what really brought us to making an album with him, because he's our, he's our executive producer on, on, the, on our album that's going to be coming out in the, in the early fall. And uh, yeah, I guess it was just like the concept of that we are a band, that we can make music that like lasts and that is good and that is not just like a fleeting kind of um, trend. 
Well, because maybe uh, is that something that that uh, because you say it was mostly instrumental in the beginning, is is that maybe where where some of the vocals came from and kind of to we we only met him in the last year when okay. we were already going we had already gone towards the vocal side of things right but definitely as far as just the purpose of our songwriting it right. took a different turn because when we started writing songs it was for the party mm -hmm. and then we got a little carried away trying to write just trying to write the coolest stuff possible for literally right. just like our bros that would just be like oh man that's super cool uh so it, it was him trying to like bring us back to like making music not necessarily for the party but just like for the people right. and like and that we liked as well it wasn't just about but it wasn't just we tended to have in our minds a lot about what our boys thought <laughs> it's tough with nine people when you overthink and overanalyze everything yeah. like to the extent of that that we have it's it's nice to get an outside opinion especially somebody who's like that professional and knows what he's talking about and just can just break it down I think that was really helpful for us. But in that sense, did, did the ambition, because it's nine people, uh, nine people, and I can imagine people's ambitions vary as well, so, so did you kind of get uh, on the same page with that as well? There can be the battle of the egos sometimes, but I think everybody's, everybody's pretty aware of themselves now. Right. They can kind of like hone it back. When if, it's, if, if a particular opinion isn't helping a situation, I think we've got really good at just kind of leaving that opinion out of the right. matter. Right. That's that's how I sit anyway. It's like if I'm not helping, it's the situation. I'm gonna let it be. <laughs> so so what is the creative process like? It does is it, does a song generally start with one person and it kind of grows out of? They're all extremely different. Okay. Like I I don't think any any two songs on the album were made the same way. Sometimes it's a little more the baby of one person. Sometimes it's two or three of the guys got together and come up with something, and then, but there's still a, it's, no matter what happened at the beginning, there's still an, and sometimes it's a jam that we all came up with, and then it got developed. But no matter what happens at the beginning, there's a whole lot of collaboration at the end. Like, just a, a whole lot. And like everyone sort of individually coming up with their parts a bit more, especially when it's, when it's in the phase where the band has their hands on it. You know, so like, sometimes, the other guys who aren't, aren't vocalists will come in with, with something and we'll all flesh it up together right. and then Ev and I might go home and individually write a vocal part and sometimes they come in with vocal parts and we're like, that's sick, I'll, you know, we'll do it. Um, or someone comes in and there's no horn lines and the horns kind of powwow a little bit and get into a space and come up with that stuff. But it, it's insanely collaborative after the middle stages of the song. Right, and then can I assume then it's, it's more of a jam type of thing where, where you just try things? I, I wouldn't say it's yeah. like a... Because, you know, jam is like a particular kind of improvisational moment or right. whatever, you know. It's like, for us, the songs are pretty arranged. Okay. And like each part has its, you know, has its parts. But I, I, don't, I don't think it's like a jam. Okay. Because, you know, you might have a solo, like eight bars, and then you're technically jamming. <laughs> sure, you know, it's like sure. an improvised solo. But... Yeah. I'd say it's more like we flesh out what the person has already written. Right. So that's right. what we know is going to be there is there, and just so you know, not not everyone's going to write you know two keys parts, a guitar part, a drum part, all right. the horn lines, but they'll maybe have like a very specific bass line and drum part, right. and that is there, and then we'll play that through, and then be like, okay, let's work, think about the other parts here in relation to everything else. What is uh, something that that he did that? <laughs> That I, that I what, sorry? That you were impressed by? Or? On the album or? Well, I'm, yeah. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, anyway, honestly, I, I, I kind of like that answer because it's something we've kind of <laughs> no, it's, no, because it's, we don't surprise each other anymore. Okay. And that's what I love. Like okay. no one in the band, like we have, I mean, obviously there are moments that we, we, we cherish each other like sure. crazy. I but. think, I mean, every time he lays something down, I'm surprised. It's, you know, I'm just going to give you more credit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're surprised every time somebody puts something on on, on a track because you're like, wow, these are real fucking musicians. They're not just like somebody you picked up off the street. They can actually play, you know? And they can sing and they can write. They can do so much more than your typical, you know, just touring musician, in my opinion. Right. But, yeah, I don't know. But so, so when you're writing, is the, is the live show in the back of your mind? Not for me. Yeah. We're trying to get it a little less in our minds because when we started, it was almost too much, right. and some things don't translate at all, you know. Uh, and and now we're sort of finding our balance of what it means because we definitely, when we made the decision to go less live, we went a little too far, 
And then now on the album, we've sort of really found a balance of the energy that we can bring on stage while also trying to bring the subtleties that can only really come across on record. Right. Which is hard to find with, when you got nine people playing all the time. <laughs> but, but so, and, and the focus might not be the right word, but, but do, is it generally you create music to be able to play live or is, is, is the studio thing something in itself? For me, I just write music. I, I, the live stuff comes later. Okay. If, you, if it's a good song, you can play it live. Right. You know, with nine people on, on stage, we'll be able to figure it out. <laughs> and if we can record it with the instruments that we have in the studio or the, like our own personal instruments, then I think that we can make it work live. Mm -hmm. And Because I, I, I don't like the concept of trying to write and then, you know, it's going to have to work live because like maybe it won't. Right. You know? right. So that's something you have to figure out later. Finally then, because um, well, you're here in, in the Netherlands now, you mentioned you don't really have a... Initially, you kind of wrote for those parties. Mm -hmm. now, now you're touring uh, internationally. What is the next step? The next step? Coming to Europe and playing for a few more people would be great. <laughs> keep <laughs> writing. Yeah. Just keep making more music. Yeah. It's, it's exciting what we've done without an album yet. Mm -hmm. We're kind of all... We, we take pride in like just a couple, you know, two EPs, one of which you made when we were still in school. Uh, and so we're excited to actually have an album out there and see what happens. And then I, I know we're all itching to get back, you know, and get album two going. Because right. we feel like we learned so much with album one that just like, yeah. I don't know, I'm ready to get like back for in me, studio. And I can, I don't know if I can speak for everybody, but our album is like, I, I think it's like the strongest material that we have. Mm. And for the most part, nobody's heard it. So we're touring off of a couple of EPs that, sure, like I'm, right. I'm proud of, but I'm not like, it's not like I'm not sensationally proud of it, you know? It's right. like, it's, this is the kind of music we made in our college slash post college vibe. And, and this album for me is like the real music that we finally were able to create as a, as a band. So, so the very last question then, what is this period, period like then to, to not be able to release it yet? <laughs> to not be able to what? It can be frustrating. Re oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we released two tracks. Um, well, yeah. Whether they're not there on the album or not, you can ask our manager. <laughs> it's, it, it is very strange, though, especially as, like, you know, we all take pride in, in developing our craft. Is that we definitely, coming up in, in music education, it sort of instilled something of, and all of us, we, we strive to improve in, in every right. aspect of our lives. It's really inspiring hanging out with all these different guys that just want to get better every, every day at so many different things. And we take that to heart, and then we're putting out stuff that we recorded a year ago that we know that on an individual level we're better than that, and as a group we're better. So it, it, it's, it's very frustrating sometimes, but it lets the live show be even better because we've come a long way, and if anyone likes these songs, we're, it's just it's really exciting to have them come see it live because then we, we, yeah, we, we know we, we do them more justice now. Right. All right, guys, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for thank having you. Us.